Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and Hey 2, and today we're going to see if JB Plastic Weld actually does, well, weld plastic. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we're going to be doing a bit of a test with JB Weld's Plastic Weld. Uh, this is called slightly different things in different parts of the world. I think they call it Plastic Bond or something in the US. But in the UK here, we get it called Plastic Weld. Now essentially this is for fixing things together, mostly plastics. So this is multi-purpose for most hard plastics, ABS, fiberglass, PVC, glass, vinyl, and most composites. Now quite often when you use super glues or certain other epoxies, they kind of burn the plastic a little bit, or you get that kind of scarring around the outside edge where it's sort of burning and the vapor's coming off and it does damaging things to plastics. Well, this is supposedly not supposed to do that and it's supposed to have a very high tensile strength. It's got a strength of 4,400 PSI and a set time of five minutes, which is uh, pretty decent. Cures in an hour, although with most of these epoxies, really I think you probably need to leave it for maybe 24 hours overnight, that kind of thing, to make them cure fully. Um, and it dries translucent yellow, which may or may not be of a benefit to you. Now what I'm gonna be using it for today is I've got this microphone from Fifine, which they sent me a while back for a review, which uh, if you want to, you can check out up here. But this has got a stand, but unfortunately, the top section of it, this bit, the plastic, is actually damaged and it's snapped off. So there is this collar, which goes around the microphone, and that just attaches onto there. So you get the general idea. So it is actually quite a weak point in the plastic, and I have actually tried to already glue this with traditional super glue, and actually did put some kind of support bits on the side made out of a credit card, just to try and give it some sort of bond. But unfortunately, it stuck for a little bit, but as soon as I tried to adjust the microphone, yeah, snapped straight off as I pretty much expected. Super glue is a pretty hard glue and it doesn't have any flexibility and doesn't like being bent or moved. So because plastics do tend to move, you really need to use some kind of bond or a cement or something with a little bit of flexibility just to give it a bit of a chance, really. So in this video today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through using JB Weld, give it a go, see if it'll work on this. I've got to be honest with you, I don't think it is. I think it's one of those things where, because it's in such a weird place on there, there's not a lot of surface area to grab to, I'll be very surprised if it works at all. Okay, so that is the introduction out of the way, so let's take this open, have a look at the instructions, and yeah, give it a test. So in the instructions it says prepare, so clean the repair area, clean of dirt, grease, oil, paint, rust, etc., which we're gonna do. I've got a little bit of clear glass from Sonax, we're gonna spray some of that on the edges, and hopefully that'll clear it up. There's a little bit of ammonia in there, so that's gonna do a pretty good job of degreasing. It's good enough for windscreens and glass, so it should be fine for this. Uh, after doing that, we've got a remove the plastic cap. Now this actually has got a resealable no waste cap, which is pretty handy because most of these kind of jobs you do every now and then. So you don't wanna buy this, which costs in the moment in the UK about six, seven pounds. So you don't really wanna spend that much on some glue or epoxy, use it once for a tiny little job and then throw it away. So having a resealable cap is good. We like that a lot. Yeah, so mix it. After removing the replaceable cap, press down on the plunger and squeeze equal amounts into a disposable surface and mix thoroughly. And we've got a uh, yogurt pot lid, which we're gonna use for that particular purpose. And that way, because it's clear, we can see both sides to see if it's actually mixed properly. I'm assuming they are slightly different colors, so we should be able to get a good idea if it's mixed. Uh, to apply, apply with the appropriate tool in an even coat, uh, weld bead or extruded shape as needed. So you can actually make additional bits. So if you've got a bit of plastic missing, you can actually use this to actually create new bits of plastic to join those gaps or bridge the gap. Uh, drying times, sets in five minutes, cures in an hour. Uh, if the temperature is below 40 Fahrenheit, then the set time is longer. For best results, use a detergent or degreaser to first clean the surface, then roughen the surface with a file or coarse sandpaper to provide the best repair. So there we go, sounds pretty simple. So let's take a look and see what it's like. So there is the plastic weld itself. You've got dual syringe on there, and you've got the twist cap on the bottom. Some of these used to have a little push thing which you could push out and actually put on the cap, but this is actually a nicer solution, so we like that. And because it's a dual syringe, you can just press it out and you get equal amounts rather than having to measure it individually. You also get a little lollipop stick or mini stick for mixing the compound, which is pretty handy. So it looks like we've got pretty much everything we need here. Let's clean these areas up. So what I'm gonna do is give that a tiny little spritz. That was a slightly bigger spritz than intended. <laughs> and we'll just rub that over the other side as well. Just make sure it's clean and degreased, or as much as possible. 
And just with a microfiber, just gonna absorb any additional moisture which is on there. Give it a good clean. Now it says to roughen up the surfaces and the surfaces are actually pretty rough already. So I'm gonna kind of wing it a little bit and see if it's okay like that. We can always uh, repeat this process if need be. I gotta be honest with you, I don't think the bond is gonna be strong enough for long-term use. But if it is, I think it's actually gonna be pretty awesome. I've always had problems trying to glue plastic. Super glue is okay for some purposes, but when you've got any form of movement or shock impact, most super glues just give up. I've wanted to try this for a long time, and now I've actually got a reason to do it. So we've got our two surfaces, which uh, yeah, appear to be clean. So we'll put those to one side. Actually, we'll move the microphone because we don't need that at all at the moment. And let's concentrate on actually mixing the product. So what we'll do is undo the cap. And pull that off. Put that to one side. Oh, and immediately you can smell that epoxy. So probably best to do this in a, uh, a well-ventilated area. Now we only need a tiny little bit to glue those bits on there. So I'm just going to push out a little bit. Hopefully it comes out quite slowly. And no, it doesn't. <laughs> Comes out in a massive glob. Okay. So let's put the lid back on. Try not to mix it as we do, because otherwise it'll be glued on permanently. And actually, this lid isn't particularly easy to put on. But anyway, hopefully that's going to do the job. So hopefully you can see that there. So we've got the two parts there. And actually looks looks pretty equal. Hopefully you can get a good, uh, good close-up of that. And all we need to do is to just mix the two parts together. That is part of the, uh, the big thing with this, to make sure that you do actually mix the two bits together really, really well. Now we've put way too much on here for this tiny little job, but we'll see what happens. So already it's starting to thicken up a bit, I can feel it already. So let's, uh, let's apply some of this to the broken areas. And I think with this less is more, so if you try not to put too much on, you can when it's dried, you can actually sand it, so that's uh, pretty useful. And make sure I get this on round the right way. And just, now I'm gonna have to hold this unfortunately for a little while to, uh, to let it grip. So it says it sets in five minutes, which it may or may not do. Ideally, once you've got it held in place, now this is a particularly difficult piece to do because of the way it is. Once you've got it in place, it's probably a good idea if you can get um, a clamp or something, a clamping device of some sort, just to hold it in place, just so that you don't have to. But for this particular purpose, I haven't got anything here which I can actually use as a proper clamping device. And what I will do is once it's actually, or at least I feel that it's actually held in place a little bit, I am gonna use the spatula and actually spread some of the glue just along the sides just to kind of clear it off a little bit. Now, of course, you could do on something like this where you've got a very, very small area, but you have got a flat surface, you could actually cut some additional pieces of plastic, maybe from a credit card or whatever plastics you've got lying around, and actually glue on some side supporting kind of beams or bars that will quite often help. It doesn't always look great, but you can always paint it or spray it after the fact, and that should uh, strengthen the arm. But it is, unfortunately, this is kind of a weak spot on this particular design, unfortunately. And with a, a slightly bigger putty or kind of filler, you could actually just fill that entire hole up in there just to give it a little bit more additional strength. Now, luckily in here today, it's about 22, 23 degrees, so it's quite a, a mild day and I'm hoping that is actually going to hold already and that is moving a little bit so I'm going to hold this in place a little bit longer so I'm going to probably hold this for about five minutes or so so we'll come back after I've held it for five minutes okay so that has been well about seven eight minutes since we've glued this and actually after my initial kind of misgivings this stuff actually looks to be pretty good 
Now, I'll show you some of the, uh, the lid. So that's actually where it's congealed, you can see on there. And it's actually still, there's a little bit there, it's still tacky. And if you wanted to, you could actually build up areas. You can actually squeeze it and mold it like you would with a putty. Obviously, I uh, probably wouldn't recommend touching it with your fingers, but I have anyway. As you can see, I've, uh, the lolly stick is in there. And there is actually quite a, a high heat that came out of this. So the, the chemical reaction between the epoxies was happening. And I put the stick in there after just to see. And there's a very, very small amount of uh, sort of adhesive actually holding that stick in place. And even now, after five minutes, you can still hit it a little bit and it moves around a little bit, but it seems to be staying stuck. And as far as our microphone stand goes, it's actually looking like it might do the job. So I'm going to leave this uh, for at least another hour. Maybe I'm going to come back to it later on today. If not, it'll come back tomorrow and we'll see how it does. We'll reassemble the microphone and see if it falls off straight away. So we'll catch you in the next part of the video. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half, maybe two hours later in the day and we're back to see if the JB Weld, the plastic weld, is actually done what it's supposed to do. Now I have actually looked on JB Weld's site after to look at the other products they do. And there is a couple of other different versions of the plastic weld they do. So if you're maybe trying to do something maybe with an automotive purpose, where you've got maybe metal to plastic or plastic to plastic, and you're trying to repair those kind of things, you might be better off with the plastic bond version. One thing I did notice about this one, the actual uh, the plastic weld, it is actually water safe. So if you want to use it on maybe some sort of cracked container for water, maybe for camping purposes or um, some sort of bottle for maybe on your mountain bike, that kind of thing, this might be the one to go for. And actually, at the moment, it's not looking too bad. The bit that I put actually on the spatula and the lid earlier, because there is so much flexibility in this lid, essentially it is like polythene and we managed to peel that off in one solid lump. So again, if you're actually trying to make a piece of plastic uh, to cover up some other breakage, then maybe that's a way of doing it. Put it onto something flexible like that so you can peel it off. You can then stick this to an, another piece. That is still actually curing, so still a little bit tacky to the touch. So maybe that needs to be left overnight if you're doing a slightly thicker piece. But for our microphone stand, things are looking pretty darn good. We managed to get a pretty good coverage all the way around. It's not permanently flat, so it isn't an invisible repair. You can see where the glue has actually been put on there, and it is, uh, yeah, it's not the prettiest of things. But we're not particularly worried about pretty. What we're worried about is actual strength and whether it's going to do its job. So I'm going to do this now on camera. I've not tried it yet to see how strong it is. I'm assuming it's done. So let's loosen this off a little bit to give it a little bit of a fighting chance, and let's see if we can actually move it Beforehand, if I'd have just touched the top, it would fall off. And actually just doing that, that would have just completely broken the seal. So let's see how it goes. That is actually quite impressive. I'm moving that. It's, there's actually quite a bit of resistance there. I'll tighten up a little bit more. Wow, I am genuinely impressed. So the real test is going to be actually putting the microphone back in. So let's grab our Fafine microphone and we'll run the cable through the hole. Put the microphone into about the right area. Actually leave that there a second. And actually that's a good sign already, the fact that it's actually holding. And that is going to have to go that way round. I'm deliberately not trying to be overly gentle with this because, well, I'm normally not in real life, which is probably why it got broken. Actually, I was on a Discord chat when it got broken, so that is the, the real reason behind it. And I knocked it off the desk, and it hit the deck. Twice. So there we go, there is our microphone back in its rightful position, and yeah, we can still move it, and very impressive. Calf is over there cringing completely. Tighten that back up a bit. And even with that fully tightened, you can see the whole thing is actually flexing rather than the uh, the actual plastic weld. So yeah, I'm very impressed. That has held up particularly well. And considering it's still probably got a little while left to, uh, to fully cure overnight possibly, yeah, I'm suitably impressed. Again, if you've got a slightly weaker joint and you want to reinforce it, 
then you can always use something else. Maybe you, you can use the included spatula, break it up a little bit and stick it on the side and use it as like splints on the side, little bits of plastic, uh, odd bits of Lego, anything you choose. Essentially, as long as it's plastic or wood or any of the other items which are listed on the box, then you can use it to stick it together. But I would chalk this up as being a definite success. Long term wise, then obviously I'll have to let you know what happens. But for now, I think this looks absolutely brilliant. Very pleased indeed. And I don't have to go and buy a new mic stand, which is excellent. So there we go. There has been the JB Weld Plastic Weld. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully you'll stick around for the next video. Thanks for watching.